I'm Oliver Berkman, and my book is called The Antidote, Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking. It's the story of my adventures among some people who have a really unexpected and I think potentially revolutionary take on how we think about happiness and success, which is, in short, that too much focus on positivity and optimism is the problem, not the answer. So here's a good place to start. There's an old game that involves getting hold of one of your friends and challenging them to not think about a polar bear for a whole minute. Of course, they can't do it. Try it for yourself. As soon as you make the effort, all you can think of is polar bears. It's the fact that you're trying so hard to do something that sabotages your attempt to do it. I think that's a good analogy for the whole book. It seems so obvious to most people that if you want to be happy, you should do lots of positive thinking, that if you want to be successful, you should set clear goals, that in general you should cultivate optimism, and above all, avoid thinking about the fact that in the end, you're going to die. But there's a lot of really exciting psychological research that's turning all that on its head. It's emerged, for example, that those books of positive thinking affirmations often make people miserable, and that visualising your goals can make you less likely to achieve them, because your brain relaxes, it gets tricked into thinking that you've already achieved the goal. And it turns out that there's a long tradition in philosophy and spirituality that's about embracing negativity, about easing up on all this positive thinking, and learning instead to bathe in insecurity and uncertainty and failure, to confront your mortality, and to find the enormous potential for happiness that's lurking inside all that. So in the book, I I meet modern-day Stoics who argue that you should often focus on the worst-case scenario instead of the best. I go on a silent Buddhist meditation retreat. I travel to Mexico and Kenya and elsewhere to try to find people who have this radical take on happiness and success. And I think what emerges is actually a really happy message, especially for people like me who've always been quite put off by positive thinking and motivational speakers and all the rest of it. And that's that as individuals and as a society, we can rediscover the power of negative thinking.